Ignorance allied with power is the most ferocious enemy justice can have. The immortal words of James Baldwin. Good morning and happy Black History Month. To President Mason, members of our Board of Trustees, elected officials, friends and special guests, alumni, students, faculty and staff, those who are watching us on stream live, it gives me great pleasure as the Chief Academic Officer of the University of the District of Columbia to welcome you to Founders Day 2022 as we gather on the hallowed grounds of our glorious UDC. Founders Day is an opportunity for us to pay homage, to look back like the Sankofa bird, to imagine the possibilities, and to bring our community, supporters, and stakeholders together to lift up this wonderful university. This is a moment that allows us to consider what our aspirations have been over the years, reflect on the past and our growth, our grit and our greatness, celebrate all that we have been achieved to come together to do and to aspire yet again, always remembering that success is never final. Our theme, celebrating our legacy, creating our future, captures the essence of where we are as an institution. It gives us the chance to reflect on our growth, where we are today, and our aspirations for the future. We are not yet done. Success is never final. We are now building on the foundation laid by our founding foundations of generations ago. As we move forward, we are looking in the mirror asking questions. What are our challenges? What are our goals? How can we address the great issues of our day? When we look ahead, we also feel inspired. We are forward looking and responsive. We have a strong focus on inclusive excellence and we have our students at heart. We believe in high expectations and have a passion for learning. We are seeking ways to advance knowledge and to educate our students to make a difference in our society and on our world. And most of all, we still believe in hard work. UDC has grit. It takes grit to achieve greatness. Welcome to Founders Day 2022. Will you please stand for the posting of the colors followed by the invocation and the battle hymn of the Republic to be performed by the University of the District of Columbia's Chorale.
Let us give the choir another round of applause. Good morning, Firebird Nation. Let us pray. We call on you who has always been and will always be, the one who is greater than ourselves, and the power that is within ourselves that reminds us that we ought always consider someone other than ourselves, and that the only reason to look down on someone is to lift them up. We thank you for President Ronald Mason, the best university president in the world, <laughs> at, at the best university in the world, <laughs> in the best city in the world. We thank you for Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton, who is black history, walking, talking, and fighting. We thank you for Mayor Muriel Bowles and her commitment to equity in education as a necessity and an imperative worthy of our investments. We thank you for the vision of Martilla Minor and her refusal to give up on a dream even when others questioned her. We thank you for the faithful members of the Board of Trustees, the dedicated professors, the amazing administrators, and essential staff. We give thanks for their motivation of mission and not money. We thank you for each and every student who carry the baton as they pursue, pursue their own dreams and live their own truth. We thank you in advance for the elimination of debt, prophecy. <laughs> for the math that they need to know is that hard work plus determination equals success. We thank you for the inspiration and leadership of Christian Sky Francesca. They remind us that the graduates of UDC will be future educators, nurses, business persons, activists, justice system workers, future Supreme Court justices, governors, and senators of Washington Douglas Commonwealth. In light of what we've been through and are going through, help us to see the importance of becoming vaccinated in order to graduate and that no weapon formed against us, no outside threat be a phone or internet will prosper, we've come too far. When the way gets rough and the going gets tough, call to our remembrance the words of the 21st century prophet that lover HBCUs, Beyonce knows. I'ma keep running because a winner don't quit on themselves. In the sweet name of the one who grandma calls on and the many wonderful names that our neighbors call on, that and those names we say amen and ashe. Thank you, you may be seated. At this particular time, we will hear greetings on behalf of our university constituencies, beginning with trustee Christopher Bell, Chair of the UDC Board of Trustees, followed by a recorded message from Chair of the Faculty Senate, Professor Arlene Kingberry, and our student leaders who will follow. Good morning, Firebird Nation. <laughs> On behalf of the University of the District of Columbia's Board of Trustees, I am delighted to welcome you to join us as we celebrate UDC's Founders Day Convocation and Awards Program. Well over a century ago, and half has passed since abolitionist Martilla Minor launched a small school for colored girls in our starkly segregated nation's capital. Their school has blossomed and grown over the years, merging with a technical institute, a teacher's college, and a law school along the way, and ultimately becoming the only public education excuse me, the only public higher education institution in Washington, D.C. Today, UDC continues to stretch, build, and grow as it strives to create pathways to the middle class and enable all of our students to achieve their highest levels of human potential. Thank you for traveling the road with us to educate critical thinkers, creative problem solvers, skilled communicators, and transformative leaders. Thank you. Bonjour, guten Morgen, buongiorno, assalamu alaikum, good morning. My name is Arlene King Beery, Chair of the Faculty Senate, bringing greetings to students, faculty, and staff on this Founders Day. Let me first acknowledge the heartbeat of this university, persons who continued quality teaching, 
scholarship, and service in spite of the technological, equity, and inclusion challenges imposed by the pandemic, the faculty. Please stand or wave your hand. Thanks to all faculty for your dedicated service to our fabulous students, staff, and the DC community, especially faculty, senate officers, and members. Let us pause to remember Ms. Deborah DeSasso, a pearl of wisdom from the Writing Center. On this Founders Day and during this Black History Month, we also remember African-American educators such as Booker T. Washington, Mary McLeod Bethune, but more importantly, the faculty at the University of the District of Columbia. Happy Founders Day. My name is Shanti Amazing, and I am a police cadet from the Metropolitan Police Department, currently majoring in criminal justice at the UDC Community College. I would like to extend a warm welcome to you all as we celebrate the founding of our university. Today is the day where we should take a moment to reflect and honor the, her the heritage and achievements of our institution. As Firebirds, we should always take the opportunity to celebrate our legacy and create our future. I would, like to I would like to express appreciation on behalf of all students of the district of the, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I would, like to I would like to express appreciation on behalf of all students of the District of Columbia and to, to the faculty and staff's commitment to providing us with the opportunity to better our education, which, enable which enables us to become better individuals. Thank you for coming to celebrate today, and I hope you all enjoy. <laughs> Greetings, Firebirds. <laughs> My name is Sky Webster, and I currently serve as the undergraduate Student Government Association President for the 2021 to 2022 academic school year. <laughs> a little about myself, I'm a recent 2020 graduate from the UDC Community College with a degree in architectural engineering. I'm also a certified green infrastructure practitioner with the university. And now I'm currently pursuing my bachelor's of arts in urban, sa urban sustainability with the intention to graduate this May. <laughs> I would like to thank every single person in this room for putting aside time today to be here for another historical Founders Day. This is my fifth Founders Day at the university and my third Founders Day as a student leader. I would like to use this moment to share some UDC history and share some of my favorite facts about the school. For those who don't know, UDC didn't always start as UDC. It originated in 1851 as the minor normal school for colored girls educating African-American women in the United States before the complete abolishment of slavery. In 1955, this institu institution merged with the Wilson Normal School and later developed into the DC Teachers College. But DC residents wanted more than just teaching. So they petitioned and we later got the Federal City College and the Washington Te Technical Institute. Um, in 1977, the institution became the University of the District of Columbia with majors dealing with business, public management, education and human ecology, liberal and fine arts, life sciences, physical science, engineering, and technology. Now our university offers over 70 majors and consistently rotates at least 10 certification opportunities each semester. Our campus is comprised of three beautiful campuses, not including the aviation campus at the DCA airport or our beautiful Firebird Farm in Bowie State, Maryland or in Bowie, Maryland. <laughs> uh, we are one of the only urban land grant universities that offer certifications, associates programs all the way to doctoral programs and a law school. We are one of three HBCUs in the nation that accept undocumented students and one of the only HBCUs, HBCUs in the nation with a Center for Inclusion, Diversity, and Multicultural Affairs. With that being said, 
The growth and history of our university should not only be important to the students, faculty, staff, and administration, but to everyone. This isn't just our history, it's black history, it's DC history. And our rich, and our rich history keeps me motivated. It reminds me to aspire for greatness, to never concede or settle on the road to achieving my accomplishments. And it's instilled in me not to just take on the world, but make it better than when I arrived. As we continue this celebration, I challenge every single person in this room to allow the school's history to motivate you in the same way. Welcome to Founders Day. Good morning, ladies and gents, Good morning. all protocols observed. My name is uh, John Irungo. I'm a graduate student uh, pursuing a master's in computer science. And uh, on behalf of the Graduate Student Government Association, we join all and sundry in celebrating our legacy, and most important, the ones who this legacy is built. Our gratitude goes from the Graduate Student Association goes to the alumni, it goes to the educators, it goes to the community partners, including the government represented here today, and students as well. So in our theme, uh, celebrating our legacy and creating our future, to everyone seated here today, I would like to say that you are the future. To my fellow students, you are the future. And the future is to achieve, and the future is to accomplish. UDC is me, and UDC is you. UDC is all of us, and this is your day. So uh, despite the prevailing uh, pandemic climate that has persisted in the last two years, the students have shown resilience against all odds. In fact, they've shown resilience amidst all odds. And in the words of Martin Luther King, which says that we must accept finite disappointment, but we must never lose infinite hope. The pandemic uh, came with its own disappointments. And uh, as the pandemic comes to an end, because it will, and we believe it must, we only have two choices. And the first choice is to win. And the second choice is to win. So, ladies and gents, as I end, I want to thank you all for the unwavering support. We also want to thank for the immense support that the graduate student community has received and for the love that you've shown to the graduate students and the student community at large. A foundation that was started in 1851 keeps shining today, and it shines in the name of UDC. Happy Founders Day. Let's give our student leaders a round of applause. Thank you also to Chairman Bell and to Professor Arlene Kingberry, who could not be here. At this time, I'd ask that you stand for the singing of the Negro National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing.
Mic is on. Okay, there we go. At this time, I'd like to introduce the president of the University of the District of Columbia, who will introduce today's speaker, President Mason. Well, I am the president, but I won't be introducing today's speaker because, um, as you can see from the program. We have the president of the University of the District of Columbia Foundation who will be introducing uh, today's speaker, Doug. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's an honor to be asked to introduce Muriel Bowser, the mayor of the District of Columbia, on such an important day. And as President Mason often says, the, at the University of the District of Columbia, the public institution for higher learning in and for the nation's capital. <laughs> to share this event with two amazing leaders, Mayor Bowser and Congresswoman Eleanor, Horton, Eleanor, Eleanor Holmes Norton, excuse me, is a fitting testament to Matilda Minor, who started the School for Colored Girls in 1851 with six students in a 14 square foot room. 
Even with Ms. Miner's passion and dogged determination, could she have imagined what her vision would lay the foundation for a university with its pre-pandemic enrollment of 4,500 degree-seeking students and 2,000 workforce development students from the district, the United States, and around the world. UDC's growth and success has been possible only with the support of Mayor Bowser. When she, <laughs> when she became mayor in 2015, one of her main goals was to create pathways to the middle class. She promised and delivered on a foundation to accomplish this goal by emphasizing workforce training, getting higher minimum wages, increased access to housing with record investments in affordable housing, in creating a pioneering program for middle income housing. And more importantly for us, a university that is the pathway to the middle class for most district residents. Her investments in UDC's equity imperative strategic plan further her goals of building a resilient, sustainable urban community. But we really have to take time to thank the mayor for her unbelievable work and leadership over the last two years, addressing things that she couldn't ever have imagined a global pandemic, unrest, protest, and yes, an insurrection. You can't plan for this, but the true measure of leadership is how you respond to such monumental challenges. And on that score, Mayor, being at an academic institution, you're graduating summa cum laude. <laughs> None of this is a surprise by Mayor Bowser. Just ask those who know her and her family. Her father, who worked for the DC Public Schools, her mother who worked as a nurse. Her dad was a community activist focusing on helping people. He once told her, the only way to make a difference is to dig in. Well, Mayor Bowser, you have certainly listened to and lived by your dad's words. On a personal note, I want to thank Mayor Bowser for two things. I'm not sure you remember this, but at a lunch several years ago, we were talking about my interest in helping higher education in DC, and you encouraged me to look into UDC and to talk to Ron Mason. It has led to one of the most rewarding experiences being part of Team UDC. And twice you have supported my wife's vision to help families who have lost loved ones to COVID-19. First, allowing her to plant over 270,000 white flags in the fall of 2020 to RFK, representing at that time each person in America who had died from COVID. And then this fall, being the keynote speaker at her opening of the installation on the National Mall, for In America Remember, where she had to plant, sadly, over 700,000 white flags. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for this incredible support of Suzanne and for the opportunity to help you build a great university in the nation's capital. With the utmost respect and appreciation, it is my honor to introduce our current and hopefully mayor of the District of Columbia through at least 2026, Muriel Bowser. Well, good morning, UDC. Please, please, good morning, UDC, and happy Founders Day. Uh, President Mason, Congresswoman Norton, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, student staff, Doug, uh, the Foundation Board, uh, to my team, who's also here, Deputy Mayor Kine, and our Aussie uh, Superintendent, I want to uh, say good morning, happy Founders Day, and happy Black History Month on behalf of 700,000 Washingtonians. And as we look to celebrate UDC's legacy, this month it is our particular honor uh, to celebrate UDC as our public historically black college and university, the public institution, as President Mason says, for the nation's capital. We also recognize, sadly, uh, that we have to keep and pay attention to those of us who don't share the pride that we do in our historically black colleges. We were shocked and outraged by the bomb threats received by our campus and HBCUs across the nation. And we are reminded of our special mission here to educate black people, uh, to take on all of the responsibilities of citizenship, 
for our city and for our nation. But we also have a special responsibility as our university is of course for Washington DC, but it's for the world as well. It is an all too familiar reminder of the challenges that we have faced as a city and a nation and the forces of hate that still remain to seek to divide us and to maintain a system of racial oppression. Your mission here is relevant. Your mission here is also urgent. This past two years has put a clear spotlight that our country continues to face a racial reckoning. It's not just about criminal justice reforms, but certainly that's a priority. It's also about a reform of our economic opportunity system. And we know UDC's critical place in reforming that system. We know that for UDC in particular, rising up against racial division is at the heart of your very founding. We've heard about Martilla Miner's vision and founder of the UDC's predecessor, the Normal School for Colored Girls, to provide educational opportunities to young black women who then went on to become teachers themselves. It was from that foundation that UDC was born and over the years we have worked together to expand and build the world-class institution that we have today. We also know that a strong, vibrant, and exceptional UDC is paramount to our success as a city. I've shared before how much UDC means to my family. I'm the proud daughter of a UDC graduate. My mother was able to get her degree while raising five children and working full time to fulfill her dreams of becoming a nurse. Our story is like so many Washingtonians. UDC offered that promise of opportunity to embark on new and exciting paths that will lead to enriching jobs and life-sustaining careers. And that is why we have worked so hard together to invest in and support UDC as the premier college for residents from all eight wards. We've invested, certainly, uh, because your president is persistent. Uh, <laughs> but his vision is also clear. Uh, we know what investments at Bertie Backus and Old Congress Heights and right here at Van Ness mean uh, for reaching residents across the city. Uh, we know that we, when we make investments in buildings, it reflects uh, the city's priorities. But it's our investments in people that make programs happen that's even more important to our future. So I want to thank you, President Mason, all of the professors and staff here that have leaned in to the work that they do with DC residents right here at our university. Please honor our faculty and staff. But we also know uh, that in order to create our future and strengthen UDC for years to come, we must invest in the future of our city. And that's our youngest residents, by giving students a clear path to college and career. DC residents have emphatically supported that reform, the necessary reform of our pre-K through 12 system. Um, but we recognize that we have a public university system as well as a law school here at UDC. And as I've said before, I want UDC to be the first choice of DC public school graduates. And we need to ensure that they have all the skills and support that they need to make that very good choice.
And that's why Deputy Mayor Kine and I, uh, with our entire team uh, in DC government, have been very focused on reimagining the high school experience by connecting DC students to work-based learning experiences, including paid internships and apprenticeships. One thing that we had learned during COVID, and not all of it was bad, um, is that in-person learning is the best for academic and social, you know, social and emotional wellness for our kids. But we also learned that many high schoolers could not only handle, but could thrive in mixed academic and work settings. So we want to lean into that experience for them so that they have structured experiences and opportunities. We're working also to implement our College Rising program, offering students access to expanded dual enrollment and additional uh, mentorship opportunities. We're working to, to launch the Advanced Technical Center as well, where students from all high schools can take courses and receive training in high demand industries like nursing and cybersecurity. Careers that, can that they can take up right here at UDC, thanks to our investments to expand these critical programs. We're also working with UDC to rethink the college curriculum, including looking at ways we can improve opportunities to earn college credit for previous work experience and work-related courses to shorten the time it takes to earn a college degree. We also want to make sure that DC students are not only prepared for UDC, but that they have access to the financial support they may need to pursue uh, and complete college. Uh, another thing that we learned in COVID was that when we had emergency money to help students um, get through the pandemic, that it helped students get through the pandemic. Uh, it helped them at home, it helped them at school, uh, and we don't want dollars, sometimes small grants, a little bit, um, can help students persist. Uh, so let's be committed to making sure we can continue that. Uh, we are also proud, uh, and this was one of the, I think, the very first initiatives that President uh, Mason launched, to give full rise to UDC for our DC valedictorians and salutatorians and spot partial scholarships for DCPS and public charter school students with GPAs of 3.0 and above. And it is why we are so proud uh, to launch DC Futures, uh, which is a $12 million investment to provide scholarship supports for residents to earn degrees in high demand fields at DC universities, uh, including UDC. So in addition to providing residents with tuition support, the DC Futures program also provides them with wraparound services, such as coaching and financial support for the outside cost. Too often we see residents start college and have to withdraw because of a family emergency or an unexpected health situation. So DC Futures is designed to prevent that by covering the cost of food, housing, health care, child care, as well as a stipend of up to $1,500 a year. So this is a transformative program. It is designed to break down the traditional barriers to college, uh, just like UDC did for my mom and it's already doing for so many DC residents. So I said a lot about investments uh, in President Mason's vision and how we can take our university to the next level, how we can more seamlessly connect uh, higher education to our pre-K through 12 education uh, and ensure that way that more residents have an opportunity to succeed right here in Washington, D.C. So, as a person uh, who can look back now over seven years as mayor of my hometown, uh, one thing I know for sure that remains a critical anxiety in our city is the ability for people to be able to afford to live here. Uh, we have made historic investments in housing, over a billion dollars, creating thousands of units. 
We have invested $352 million just in the last year to prevent 50,000 people from being evicted from their homes. But being able to afford to stay in a city that is growing, where the prices of housing go up, where the amenities, of course, are incredible, but it costs a lot to live here. So taking care of the affordability of housing is one part of the work that we have to do. The other part of the work that we have to do is make sure that people can earn incomes and have good paying jobs. So you see UDC, you are critical to helping me keep my promise to DC residents. And that promise is if you're willing to work hard, you will have a fair shot in this city. And so you can have a fair shot when we are investing uh, in good paying, high demand industries that we are gonna grow right here in the best city in the world. So we know that creating our shared future is gonna take all of us. And that is why I have been grateful that President Mason uh, decided to fully participate in our administration by participating as an active member of my cabinet, by working with Deputy Mayor Kine as a member of our uh, education cluster. Uh, because that way, our vision, city and university, can go forward together. Um, so I stand before you, a colored girl, a daughter of an alumni and mayor of my hometown and wishing you the happiest of Founders Days. Um, I don't usually correct mayors, but um, Mayor, you may not remember this, but when I first got here, we had breakfast. And uh, you told me the vision you had for a great university in the District of Columbia. And you keep calling it my vision, but actually I just want to work to achieve your vision. So I want you to know that. The second thing is, on behalf of Team UDC, I want you to know that we are proud to be members of Team Bowser. And then third, we know you have a, uh, a knack for fashion and being fashionable, and there's nothing more fashionable than UDC paraphernalia. That's right. <laughs> and so we'd like to offer you thank this you. as a token about thank you. Thank, thank you, you thank Mayor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, President Mason, and it's always good to see our Congresswoman. And I have a lot of Firebird paraphernalia, but you can never have too much. Um, and I want to apologize in advance for having to leave early, but we're about to break ground on a brand new hospital at St. Elizabeth's. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. Uh, thank you, President Mason. Thank you, Chairman Furstenberg. Uh, we are now at a point in our program where we will begin to transition to presentation of awards across Founders Day. And at this particular time, I'd like to invite uh, Chief Student Development and Success Officer, Dr. William Latham, to the podium for our student presentations. Good morning, Firebirds. <clears throat> Certainly a pleasure and honor to be here and recognize our students from across our campuses who certainly represent the very best of what we uh, expect of them. We call them to serve, they do that. We call them to lead, they do that. And it's an honor every year to recognize three individuals who certainly em embody the Firebird spirit. First of all, in this particular order, is a uh, recognition of our particular student humanitarian and civic engagement awards. The first would be Christian Salgado Nunez, who's an education major from UDC Community College. Let's recognize Christian. <laughs> Christian has been involved in obviously a lot of work around the Latino Affairs Office with the mayor, has a 4.0 GPA, and has really been an office of service to the community especially around Latino affairs in this particular city. Thank you, Christian.
Next, we have a UDC flagship campus recipient. You met her earlier today, and, and she spoke on program. She's Sky Marie Webster, the USGA undergraduate president. As you mentioned, Sky exemplifies not only this type of student that we want in servant leadership, but she's a CC graduate, as she mentioned, has uh, transitioned to the flagship campus and has done extremely well on both campuses. And we're very proud of you, Sky, and thank you for your service to UDC. Last but certainly not least is the UDC David A. Clark School of Law recipient, Francesca Bryce. Let's recognize Francesca as she comes to the podium today. She, she has been a merit scholar all three years of law school, certainly has volunteered at numerous clinics around the law school and involved with the law school as well as within the city, and is a member of the National Society of Leadership and Success. So thank you, Francesca, for your great service. Let's again recognize all three recipients. Thank you. At this time, President Mason, will you come to the podium to present the Matilla Minor Award? The um, Matilla Minor Award is our highest, excuse me, I'm so used to wearing it, I feel funny when I take it off. Um, it's our highest honor at the university, and it is for outstanding and lasting community service. Uh, our recipient this year is Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton, who is now in her 15th term, please. <clears throat> She is now in her 15th term as the Congresswoman for the District of Columbia. Before her congressional service, President Jimmy Carter appointed her to serve as the first woman to chair the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. She came to Congress as a national figure who had been a civil rights and feminist leader, tenured professor of law, and board member at three Fortune 500 companies. Congresswoman Norton has been named one of the 100 most important American women and one of the most powerful women in Washington, D.C. The Congresswoman's work for full congressional voting representation and for full democracy for the people of the District of Columbia continues her lifelong struggle for universal human and civil rights. Congresswoman Norton Congresswoman Norton has brought home unique economic benefits to her constituents. Among them are senatorial courtesy to recommend federal judges, the U.S. Attorney, and other significant federal law enforcement positions for the district. A unique $5,000 D.C. home buyer tax credit, which has sharply increased home ownership in the district and was a major factor in stabilizing the city's population and D.C. business tax incentives, including a significant wage credit for employing D.C. residents, which has maintained businesses and residents in the district. Congresswoman Norton has also brought significant economic development to the District of Columbia. Most significant are her work in bringing, the D bringing to D.C. the U.S. Department of Homeland Security Headquarters compound, which is now under construction, it is the largest federal construction project in the country. Her bill that is developing the 55-acre Southeast Federal Center, the first private development on federal land, her work that resulted in the relocation of 6,000 jobs to the Washington Navy Yard, and her successful efforts to bring to the district the new headquarters for the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, 
along with additional metro station at New York Avenue, which has resulted in the development of Noma, the Noma neighborhood. Congresswoman Norton helped end the city's most serious financial crisis in a century in the 1990s by achieving a historic package that for the first time restructured the financial relationship between Congress and the district by transferring $5 billion in unfunded pension liabilities and billions more in state costs to the federal government. The Congresswoman who taught law full time before being elected is a tenured professor at Georgetown University School of Law. After receiving her bachelor's degree from Antioch College in Ohio, she simultaneously earned her law degree and a master's degree in American studies from Yale University. Yale Law School has awarded her the Citation of Merit for Outstanding Alumni, and Yale Graduate School of Arts and Sciences has awarded her the Wilbur Cross Medal for Outstanding Alumni, the highest awards conferred by each on alumni. She is the recipient of more than 50 honorary degrees. Before being elected, Congresswoman Norton served as a trustee on a number of public service boards, including the Rockefeller Foundation, the Board of Governors of the DC Bar Association, as well as boards of civil rights and other national organizations. The Congresswoman is a third generation Washingtonian and is the mother of John Holmes Norton and Catherine Felicia Norton. This is obviously a great leader in public service but that is not the only reason uh, we are awarding this award today. I was watching a documentary on uh, Freedom Summer in, in Mississippi in the early 60s, and I saw the Congresswoman being int interviewed several times on camera. Um, and she is a friend of a mutual friend of mine, David Dennis, uh, who was also working in Mississippi at the time during the Freedom Summer. Uh, and so I decided to call Dave and, and see a little, find out a little bit more about the person. Uh, and Dave is, is publishing a book, and he said that one of the chapters in the book is the women of the movement, and that Congresswoman uh, Norton is featured in that chapter, uh, that she worked with Bob Moses in the Delta, one of many young people who put their lives on the line. Uh, and, and work with Bob Moses in the Mississippi Delta, which is the most southern place on earth. Um, that's a book, but it's also true. Um, and Dave sends you his love and says this is a well-deserved honor. Uh, and then I wikipedia the Congresswoman, and here's what it said. Uh, while in college and graduate school, she was active in the Civil Rights Movement and an organizer for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. By the time she graduated from Antioch, she had already been arrested for organizing and participating in sit-ins in Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Ohio. While in law school, she traveled to Mississippi for the Mississippi Freedom Summer and worked with civil rights stalwarts such as Medgar Evers. Her first encounter with a recently released but physically beaten family, Lou Hamer, forced her to bear witness to the intensity of violence and Jim Crow repression in the South. Her time with the SNCC inspired her lifelong commitment to social activism and her budding sense of feminism. And so we award the Matilda Minor Award to the Congresswoman today, not only because she's a great leader and Congresswoman, but because she is a soldier for justice who has stood the test of time and has never wavered from that cause in her entire life. Congresswoman. I'll bring it to you.
Thank you, uh, Mr. President, for that wonderful award <laughs> and for that uh, rendition of the part of my life that I am proudest of. I am particularly honored to be here in our own State University. And it gives me great pleasure to be honored by your Presidential Medal, the Matilda Minor Award for, from our own, our own precious University of the District of Columbia, the oldest, one of the, surely one of the oldest land grant universities in the United States. I have worked hard uh, during my time in Congress to ensure that the University of the District of Columbia receives equal federal funding, and that fight continues. I am pleased to note on this occasion our success in securing equal historically black colleges and universities funding and land grant funding for the University of the District of Columbia. I have been fighting for the last decade to make DC eligible for federal forestry research funding on the, the McIntyre Stennis Act in the same manner as states, which would provide funding to UDC's College of Agriculture, Urban Sustainability, and Environmental Scientists. My problem is there continues to be Republican opposition to treating DC as a state and diluting the funding currently raised by states. Once DC is a state, we will no longer face these problems. We have now made historic progress on making DC the 51st state of the union. The House of Representatives has passed the DC statehood bill twice in the last two years, a rec and a record 46 senators support our DC statehood bill. President Biden has also strongly endorsed statehood for the District of Columbia. I, I cannot close uh, without assuring you that we are working in Congress to provide more funding to HBCUs and to pass a resolution condemning recent bomb threats against HBCUs. UDC has always had my support and always will. Thank you again for this extraordinary award and recognition. At this time, I'd like to welcome Vice President Rodney Trapp to present awards on behalf of the University of the District of Columbia Foundation and Alumni Association. Good morning. I'm presenting awards uh, today for uh, outstanding leadership in philanthropy and volunteerism. The first award is the Pathmaker Awards. The Pathmaker Award is presented annually at UDC's Founders Day. Uh, the award is awarded to alumnus and an employee of the university who has consistently supported the university and its students through a commitment to philanthropy. Our four first award recipient is Dr. April Massey. <laughs> Doc Dr. Massey. <laughs> Dr. 
as you know, Dr. Massey is the Dean of the College of uh, Arts and Sciences. Uh, she has also been a staunch philanthropist for the university for a number of years. And about a year and a half ago, she asked me, she, uh, Rodney, is there a way that we can have more support from the staff and the, uh, the faculty? And she said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish a scholarship fund myself. And so last year, she did that. Thank you. Our second recipient is Ms. June Daughtery. Um, Ms. Daughtery is an alumnus of the university. Uh, she is also a very staunch philanthropist as well. When I called uh, Ms. Daughtery about this award, she thought it was a prank. Uh, <laughs> I indicated to her that did you know that you have been giving consistently to the university every year for 16 years? <laughs> June Daughtery. Our final award in this category is the Distinguished Alumni Legacy Award. The Distinguished Alumni Legacy Award is presented annually at the UDC Foundation's Founders Day celebration. It is awarded to an active member of the UDC National Alumni Society for five years or more and who has demonstrated extraordinary participation in the association through contributions to the Alumni Society, including increasing membership participation, enhancing the image of the association, showing professional ethics of the highest caliber, and engaging in the community. This particular uh, recipient serves as the communications chair for the UDC NAS and volunteers at the food pantry. Ms. Georgette Johnson. Thank you. Will Dr. Malva Reed please come to the podium to begin presentations of our four university awards. Happy Founders Day, UDC. It is my privilege to give these four recipients University Awards. The first award is the Distinguished Ed Educators Award. It's named for the Honorable Marjorie Holloman Parker. It is presented annually at the UDC's Founders Day celebration to an individual whose laudable contributions as an educator have made a discernible difference in the city and nation's schools, colleges, and universities of private institutions. This recipient I call a professor's professor. This person goes beyond the call of duty every day and sets the bar high in everything he does. He is not only a role model for new, but also seasoned professors alike. It is my honor to present to you the Distinguished Educators Award to Dr. Benson George Cook, Professor of Col the College of Arts and Sciences. Okay, the next recipient 
is the Distinguished Service Award, is named for the former Washington Technical Institute President, Cleveland E. Denard, I'm sorry, Cleveland L. Denard. It is presented annually at the UDC's Founders Day celebration to an individual who has demonstrated a long-term commitment to the university's outstanding service. I have not had the privilege to work with this person firsthand, but I just want to say I have talked to numerous people, and what they say about this recipient is that if it wasn't for her dedication, her tenacity, her stick to itness, her, her dedication to getting things done on time, they would not have done a lot of the things at the university. So it is my privilege to honor the Distinguished Service Award to Jerry Johnson, Director of Operations at UDC Community College. The next award is the Distinguished Leadership Award. It's named for the Honorable Ronald H. Brown. It is presented annually at the UDC's Founders Day celebration to an individual who has demonstrated outstanding leadership in their profession and whose work has contributed to improving one's community and its citizens on a local, national, international level. Words cannot begin to describe this person. I've had firsthand experience with working with her on a number of occasions. When I call, she answers. When you call, she answers. And it's not only during the day, but at night. I know Dr. Potter has called her like 11, 12 o'clock at night, and she's actually responded. So words cannot begin to express her dedication that she only not only provides to us, but to every student in the university. It is my privilege and honor to provide this award to Miss Tiffany Cooper, the University Registrar. The last award is called the Lifetime Achievement Award. Oh my goodness, Lifetime. is named for the former District of Columbia Teachers College President, Paul Phillips Cook. It is presented annually at the UDC's Founder Day, Founders Day celebration to a University of the District of Columbia faculty or staff member who has consistently demonstrated exceptional loyalty an extraordinary commitment, dedication, and service to its advancement of goals and objectives. I too have not had the firsthand privilege to work with this person, but a lifetime of service at the University of the District of Columbia. University libraries cannot work without dedication. It cannot work with people willing to go up and beyond the call of duty to ensure that our students have the resources and what's available to continue for them to achieve excellence. It is my privilege to award the Lifetime Achievement Award recipient to William T. Thomas, librarian technician at the David A. Clark School of Law. Let's give all of our honorees a round of applause, please. As
as our chorale comes back to the stage, uh, I want to make a few acknowledgments um, for all of the individuals who have worked on this program. Please stand. Denise Slaughter, Deirdre Robinson, Frenika Rivers, Lee Bryan Reba, Trelanda Beckett, Melinda Jennings, Will Strong, the music department, uh, every the staff in the theater here, all of the staff in the theater, please raise your hands. These types of productions could not happen without the blood, sweat, and labor of individuals like these dedicated employees here at the university. And so I want to acknowledge to our student ambassadors who are here today, where are you? Thank you so very much for being a part of today's program. Uh, we very much appreciate you serving as host. Uh, to all of the staff members and faculty who are out there in Streamland, we very much appreciate you. We wish that you could have joined us, uh, but we did have limited seating. To all of the alumni in the house, please raise your hands. We very much appreciate you to returning for returning to our glorious UDC. And by and large, all of the university administrators, deans, department chairs, cabinet level members, please raise your hands. Thank you very much for your shared leadership and vision across the organization, faculty in the building. Raise your hand. Thank you for your trusted dedication to our students. We will now have the singing of the alma mater. Please stand. Following the singing of the alma mater, we will have a benediction. in the best version of the story, The Wiz, she walked the yellow brick road. Your firebirds, you walk the red and gold road. We do not have a benediction in this normal sense because as students and alum of UDC, you are lifelong learners. And so I give to you as you travel that red and gold road, these words from Malti Babcock, that they may sustain you and that you may hear the breath of his words on the back of your necks. We are not here to play, to dream, or to drift. 
We've got work to do and loads to lift. Shun not the struggle. Miss Minor didn't. Be strong. 